Hey, I wonder if you uh, would love to have <clears throat> thousands, even or hundreds, even thousands of people recommending you. What would that be? What impact would that have on your business? Well, it, it, it answers itself. You'd it'd be great to have that. Uh, so, so how pre- precisely can we get that to happen? Uh, you know, uh, Mark Sanderfield of General Rain Marketing uh, uh, tells a story. I think it's a great story. So, so I thought I'd tell it to tell it to to you folks uh, because it's very. Uh, in, Latin. in fact, it's an example from an <clears throat> anti-collecting uh, place that he goes to. Uh, you know, don't 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 turn us off because apply this to your own business. But here's his story. <clears throat> he says, hanging in his in his office is an antique sword, formerly owned by uh, Jean Pierre Robinette. Monsieur Robinette, you know, was the finance director for Napoleon One, and since his role was administrative and not military. The sword was actually rather wimpy. Nice to look at, but it'd probably break in half in a real battle. However, when he was sworn into office, Monsieur Robinette was the only member of Napoleon's court not to have a sword. So he commissioned one from the great sword craftsman Angelo Delamico of Seville, Spain, and that may all be messed up. But that ain't the point. Let's go on. <laughs> Unfortunately, the first time he wore the sword in court. He was made fun of by Napoleon's chief of staff. And tempers flared. Uh, a duel ensued. And Napoleon was soon in search of a new accountant. Okay. Now, Mark talked about this story because he, he, uh, he, because the person who sold the sword at Red Baron Antiques uh, there in Atlanta told it to him. That's how he knew the story. Since Marion and, uh, and his wife, which is his wife's name, entertained a lot, they told the story time and time again, uh, dozens of times over the years. Uh, and of course, being able to tell the story was one of the most pleasurable aspects of owning the sword, as, as David tells it. And uh, but the, the the important part part of, that he tells is this: at the end of the story, instinctively include the part about how he learned about the story when he purchased the sword at Red Baron Antiques, and so. See, we, he just had it done again through me. All right. So here's the important point that, that we've all got to take from this. <clears throat> he, he instinctively goes on and talks about Red Baron's antique place, how cool it is, and how all the items they sell have great stories behind them. Uh, and so you see the point. Every time he tells a story about the sword, he tells a story about Red Baron's antiques, what a great place it is, and all they offer. Uh, they're bragging on Red Baron because they gave him a great story to tell. And you know what you notice is that if 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 if, if you if you tell someone the story such as that, they invariably start telling a cool thing they bought at Red Baron's. So it kind of snowballs. Lots of people seem to have a same story about Red Barons in that area. So one starts talking about it, David starts talking about it, someone else starts talking about it. You know, obviously there, there, there's no shortage of antique shops in, in Atlanta. And quite frankly, as he says, Red Baron isn't the most convenient place to get into. They say the parking uh, is, is a pain, but it becomes the antique shop of destination for a lot of people. See, a large part of their appeal is that they arm us with great stories we can tell to others about the cool stuff that we buy from them. So, here's the question. It brings us to this. What is a cool story about your business or your services that a customer can get from you? Is it something about the experience clients have the first time they visit with you? Is it something about the great information that you share with them? Is it about events and activities they get invited to once they're part of your circle? Is it the personal handwriting note that you send? See, you need to let to make your clients proud of the fact that they found your business and were able to, and they selected you. So you need to give them stories that they'll want to tell to other people. So what is it? Begin to think. What experience can you have with your client? That'd be so compelling, so interesting, so unique. 
that they'll tell their neighbors. They'll tell their neighbors, and they'll tell their kid folks, and then the others will tell a story they had about you. Think about it. It can become very, very exponential overnight. It, it, can, it, it can really spread your name over a city just by a few unique things that you do in, in short order. John Davis, Arbor Market University. See you next time.